Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so happy to see you out this evening on our 11th annual poetry recital here at Baby Wadden Branch Library. Um, we are going to have an excellent show tonight. There are uh, many talented poets in our audience, and we cannot hear some of the cannot wait to hear some of the talent that we have. Um, some of the people who will be speaking uh, our spoken word tonight. I'd like to introduce Larry Ware, who has been our host for the last 11 years. Um, he is also uh, an advocate for the Baby Branch and helps uh, get many things here for us in this community at this branch, and um, I'm so thankful to have him as part of our community. And he's also a, a very well-known local poet in his own right, and he'll do some poetry tonight as well. So please, without any further ado, welcome Larry Ware. Thank you very much for the uh, wonderful introduction there, uh, Linda. Linda, let's give her a great round of applause. Uh, she's doing such a wonderful job here, her and the staff. And also, let's give our cameraman, Dave, he does a wonderful job as well, and we're just uh, blessed to have him here, too. And, uh, and before we get into the program, it is, um, uh, customary that we pay tribute to those who are not here this evening to share this uh, moment with us and we uh, uh, um, uh, wish those who are shut in and sick uh, well and uh, I'd like to make a special dedication to a, a good friend of mine of over 30 years, uh, Henry Clark, the former California heavyweight champion who uh, passed away just recently and uh, we um, uh, send our condolences to uh, his family, and um, we're going to get the program underway right now. And um, I would like to introduce our. Uh, this is going to be a spectacular night. I can feel it. Uh, our first poet is going to be um, uh, Patrick. Let's give uh, Patrick uh, Johnson a great round of applause. Thank you, Larry. Good evening, everybody. Um, first poem I'd like to do is called Spiritual Resurrection. I close my ears to all external sound and listen to a voice within. I was amazed by what I didn't hear anymore. Outside criticism no longer interfered with my thoughts or affected my senses. People who sat in judgment of me became silent observers. Yes, I sat and listened to the voice within my soul. Thus it dawned on me that peace must come from within. Yes, the fear of what others would uh, people think or how they would react was of no consequence to me. A healing process had begun which gave me a new sense of awareness. Inner peace, self-acceptance, and a conscious free of guilt I was important, my thoughts were important, and my actions were consequential to how I viewed them. I had experienced a spiritual resurrection. My life became my own, and I loved it for being so. That's, that's it, thank you. Thank you. The next poem I'd like to read is called, Do You Read Me Over? Not long after the death sentence I had received was lifted and I was exonerated, I decided a change would be necessary in order to prevent, to prevent myself from being victim to the same circumstances that had impaired me before, not allowing anything to persuade my thinking or intrude upon my concentration. The first thing I had to do is to develop my thought perception to its strongest possible degree. This would eliminate, this would enable me to block any and all irrelevant, unuseful conversation that only served to diminish my mental state of well-being. This would also shield me from 
unwanted pain and misery that people tend to impose upon you when they fail to communicate their thoughts properly. No longer shall I be drawn into meaningless chit chat that's based on gossip or that he say, she say shit. Spare me the pain. I will not serve as interpreter of senseless, illogical words that, that's inflicted by ignorance and stupidity. You have to know what you're saying and say what you know, all BS aside. Be aware, all information not intelligently thought out before being transmitted will be blocked to ensure against miscommunication. All clear signals containing valuable information will be properly interpreted and be responded to in the same fashion as it is transmitted, thus eliminating all forms of communication. Do you read me? Over. All right there, Brother Johnson. Okay, our next poet is gonna be um, Craig Cohen uh, Jr. Let's give him a great round of applause. I'm Craig, I'm 16, I know, just turned 17 the, a couple of days ago, actually. The ninth. Um, and um, my, poet, my poetry today is gonna be basically around one issue, and that's about tobacco. Because as many of you know, if you look at, uh, if you go in, if you, this neighborhood is, is known for having a lot of different problems in the neighborhood, and one of them is tobacco. So I'm just telling you, it's just, that's, a, that's a whole theme of my, po my poetry today. Um, the first piece, it's called Transnational Tobacco Corporations. And you, to shorten that, it's TNTs. And I'll use the word TNTs, so I just want you to know what that means, okay? All right, um, begins like this. Treachery against the races of man and all his new sons and daughters. Never understood until after our deaths, none can be turned aside. Ignoring our safety, none can deny are these larcenous TNTs, our own butchers, all from our, all from our wealthiest clans of men, creating can cancerous objects to be sold to kids, completely overriding righteous laws for profit. I hope it should not be deemed worthy. Uh, the next one is, is, is named Camo, Newports, and Philip Morris. Cancer in and amongst my people, a new method of, euthani of, euthani of, euth of euthanization, laboriously sold to Africans, native sons of Africa, enslaved. Woe to the families of smokers, people's parents, Otosans, families, one, one ration of strength the heart and souls of our family. People need to help stop this infection caused by larcenous ill, spreading, spreading poisons. People who view money over people's lives and rights, ruled by ire-filled malignant souls whose names are Morris, Reynolds, and some others. This is my last one. Uh, it's, I kind of wrote today on a bus here because it was, I kind of got inspired. Um, it's called what, what I Did Today. What I did today. Today I did something strange. I have done something that might be illegal. I went out and put warnings on craft in Nabisco. These warnings, they say, that tobacco is wacko. That it is dangerous to kids and adults alike and that Kraft and Nabisco are owned by the TNTs, yeah. who lie and cheat and bribe and steal, all to make a really big profit. A profit you say is not a man's life, but I say smoke will kill all. Thank you. Oh. All right. OK. Uh, Next uh, poet is going to be uh, Abdul Azim. Abdul! 
Let's give our Bill a great round of applause there. My poem is called, I Am an African Boy Stolen from Africa. I am an African boy stolen from Africa. I wonder if I can be free from Shaitan. I hear that Shaitan is the most wicked. I see what my Lord sees. I want to touch the freedom. I am an African boy stolen from Africa. I pretend to be nice to mean people. I feel sorry for Africa. I touch freedom. I'm still a slave. I worry about mom out in the colored fields. I cry when I see my people wet. I am an African boy stolen from Africa. I understand the riches of my people. I say what is my real purpose on this earth. I dream to be free, run away. I try to run away, but I get caught, and then I end up getting wet. I hope I don't get caught next time. I am an African boy stolen from Africa. Let's give this young man a great round of applause there. Let's give our Bill a great round of applause there. All right, it's all right. All right. Okay, um, our next poet, uh, man, this gentleman, we go way back. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure for him to be here. Uh, first time uh, celebrating this um, 11th anniversary with us. Let's give uh, Bernard Williams a great round of applause. I'm going to do this little musical poetry, uh, poem I did. Uh, I put it together about last month. I represent Infinity Group, uh, founded by one of our local play playwrights, you probably know, Miss Mary Lee Booker. And um, uh, the music behind it was put together by Carolyn Joseph, who's also a local around here, who does a lot of community work. So they kind of inspired me to put this little thing together. And I'm going to give it a go, and I hope you guys get the message. Uh, the name of this piece is Who's to Blame? We should be aware of what's destroying our brotherhood, our welfare. Kids hanging out on one corner, adults on the other. What's up with this? My sisters, my brothers. We complain when our kids act crazy and insane. Then we point the finger at them when they smoke, drink, and fight, and hang out all night. But you have to admit how many of us grown-ups are doing right. Let's show them that we could do better by doing less negative teaching and more positive preaching. Between me, between you, there's got to be something, something better, something better for us to do. Oh, yeah. There's no fame in this game. Oh Lord, what, what a shame. Please God help us, help us please. Because we're all, we're all the blame. Stop this fussing and cussing. Let's wake up, not fake up. Let's fess up and clean this mess up. People, let's use these opportunities and save our communities. There's no fame 
in this game. Oh Lord, what a shame. God, please help us, help us please, because we're all the blame. Please God help, help us please, because we're all, we are all the blame. Let's give Brother Williams another great round of applause. Hey, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's all right. I like that. Yeah. Uh, come on, Tweety. He didn't want to do no introduction, but um, I'm going to do one poem right now and do a later. Uh, um, come here, please. I'd like to dedicate this to my family right now. My heart is heavy, but uh, I'd like to dedicate this to uh, my family. And uh, it's entitled, uh, Love is Life. <clears throat> Love is life, and life is so very, very nice. When the atmosphere is pleasant and thoughts are peaceful, Life for living is like a warm and beautiful feeling, touching me, touching you. As I look into the beautiful horizons, I see children playing warm and safe under the loving eyes of the friendly sky, vivacious, energetic, and so full of life, and love is life. As the wonderfulness of the day settles in, a lovely lady places a warm and very sweet kiss on my lips. My heart has been touched and blessed. This beautiful feeling created by me and you was made to be shared. Always remembering the beautiful days of summer. Love is what we make it and may it always be something beautiful dear near our hearts. Love is me touching you. Love is you touching me. Love is being in touch with each other's feelings. Love is giving, sharing, and caring. Love makes two hearts sing in harmony. Love makes wedding bells ring. Love brings rain to the flowers and trees and helps them grow beautiful and tall. Love is you and me and a family together living for the love this beautiful life has given us. Love is life. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Our uh, next poet is going to be uh, this. This gentleman here is a, a genius. Like uh, I. Uh, Look at the artwork uh, around here, uh, spectacular. Um, when we, when we uh, first came in here uh, last week and I looked and, and the first picture that caught my eye was this one here and like, uh, looking like, wow, like this remind me of like Harlem Renaissance, uh, you know, the, the film or back in the day. And uh, you see all the great poets from all over the world, the different uh, centuries. Uh, this gentleman here, is it, it is indeed a pleasure to have him as a poet this year. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, Diallo. Let's give Diallo a great round of applause. I would like to do a tribute to a painting, to one of my paintings. Tribute to this poet, a Chinese poet, Li Bai, a seventh century uh, Tang Dynasty yeah. poet. Uh, the, the, the seventh century of the Tang Dynasty represent China's golden age in, in art and literature. So here's my dedication to Li Bai. Homesickness on a quiet night. On the ground, before my bed is spread the bright moon. But I take it for the forest. When I wake up, it is the first sight 
I look up at the bright moon in the sky. As I bow my head <coughs> in deep sigh. That's me by. I have um, two poems that I want to recite, and the first poem is called The Eyes of the Mind, and it goes like this. The path of my mind's eye is wrapped around time, times of growth sedated by thought, an abundance of memory creating a warm and cozy place of your own atmosphere, only to be recalled at your convenience. The eyes of your mind replay back past times in full view and full color, as if actually seen with your eyes, but eyes become blind when mind speaks. It demands full attention from every part of you. Your mind is a gift from God, the magical mysteries of vision and memory, giving the ability to dive in and out of time unconfined. Mentality can lock you up and throw away the key. Well, you want to come up here? Mentality can lock you up and throw away the key, or it can lift you up and make you free. That's it. Thank you. And, okay. I haven't seen this book in about a year, so I have to really like. Okay, and this one is entitled Mentality. Walking around mentally blind, thinking everything is oh so fine. They're so far away from reality. Can't even comprehend this word called morality. Anything this world has to offer, they swallow. Only in a shallow pool do they wallow. If that pool even tries to get deep, to shelter they run, then back to sleep. Sleeping hard with eyes wide open while their spirituality remains shattered and broken. When the struggle of our people has long been forgotten, they think that the only struggle was in picking cotton. The contributions of our people, they give it no thought. On the auction block of the devil, they've been bought. Invisible shackles from head to toe. Wherever the devil leads, they will go. 
He makes the wrongfulness of the world seem so right so that the mentally confused mistake him for the light. In their eyes, he is a star that shines so bright. If you even think about pulling them away, be prepared for a fight, a fight of the righteous and of the wicked. Now is not the time for you to just kick it. Get off your behind and buy your ticket. Thank you. <laughs> That was beautiful. Let's give her another big round of applause. All right. Okay, our next poet is going to be uh, this young brother. He's been on our program several times. He's a regular. Let's give a, a gifted uh, young brother, too. Let's give our brother Jesse Wilder a great round of applause there. Let's give it up for Jesse. Good evening, y'all. I guess y'all can see I'm sort of like giddy because um, all these black folks and white person. You know, we're all together here. You know, it's, it's a good atmosphere. I like this. Um, uh, I have two, and they're both sort of somber, but uh, you have to read more and sue them. The first one's called A Man Outside My Window. There is a man outside my window. Outside he has been, though it's 12 degrees below zero. He has an S on his chest, symbolizing the bravado of a super Negro. But he cannot be a hero, you know, like the many we grow up with. Superman, Batman, God. This man stands roughshod, wrinkled and aghast. A ghost amongst the living, sifting through timelines to discover a hidden past. Through plate glass, I see his face as an hourglass. Even Stephen, even Stephen Wonder could see it. The life in his eyes, you'd have to see it to believe it. He's old but authentic, a bit augmented, but I can see this is intended. The storm has relented, relinquished tranquility, but his, sto but his soul is stuck in struggle, almost cemented. Being close to him can't prevent this, only make life a little more bearable make life a lot less terrible, make one's reflection in the mirror a miracle. Outside my window, there'd be a man from long ago. His hair is matted and nappy, but still able to grow. He yearns to speak, but his mouth is slow to open, and I'm hoping his words are great enough to know then I can maybe swim vast oceans of wisdom with them. He is frostbitten, his lashes stutter. They remind me of a love-lorn lover, torn between the arms of a known love and the legs of another. Another thing has come to mind, but I shan't bother. Must not deviate from the matter at hand, the visual complacency of both the window and a man who has yet to utter a single syllable that I should under or overstand. Yet I am fascinated to no end, smitten with the river of curiosity flowing within. He's been through hell, I comprehend, and words cannot begin to say all the feelings which I feel, but then explicit descriptions of him are as fleeting love letters to the wind. This gentleman invading my very personal private space cannot be a friend, or is he? Thrown off guard, my defenses are weakened, beaten down to create in me a sense of fragility which before was a mystery. Before me looking be dragged and be dazzled and beyond words, stands a man unkempt, unclean, yet hopelessly beautiful. Fearlessly insightful as snowflakes fall around him, blanketing his peaceful body in a white, pure and colorful. Running to the window to let him inside, he disappears. And I am left with doubt and frustration and anger and tears. Crying madly, sadly left with nothing more than a simple remembrance of my father, the man outside my window. Thank you. All right, um, this last one is called Slavery Fighter. <clears throat> Ignorance 
is my daughter's muse. She attacks the streets full throttle with an angst one can't defuse. Please excuse all the ill-advised metaphors and anger I must use. Yet in order to thwart the evil and devil, I must command the language of the sad song blues. See, I fight for emancipation from slavery, which still exists. So I adorn boxing myths when it's time to hit sin strips, splitting lips with numerous lashes of my flaming hot tongue whip, flipping the script on all who oppress, slipping through unequal loopholes in the contract of black and white, while I address the minority press and stress the significance of freeing oneself and true happiness, lest we end up freedomless, suppressed and emotionless in physical arrest. Yet it is time that we become our greatest, most challenging test, and I must profess that our situation as a people has seemingly become semi-hopeless, fruitless, as my brother and my sister shout at their father's funeral, which is surreal, for the thought of death is only a figment of the imagination. Ignorance is my daughter's muse. I refuse to dilute an ugly death with joyous ceremony for my own behalf, knowing very well half of an ugly death is my fault my unceasing mental slavery, my incapacity to see, to hear, to comprehend, to sympathize, empathize. I realize now that each and every being is victim to lies which blind and confound the eyes, offering ignorance a reprise. It disguises its motives and strong arms its way into our lives and promises to never leave our side. So we must compete with it and destroy it, and we must act promptly, intelligently, seek higher ground, all the while eluding the hands of danger, disrupting the frolicsome horrors of oppression, and go on to question the power that is, ask why we are being taught such a wicked and violent lesson. A slavery fighter we all must be till our wounds are healed and evil has been dispelled and we are set free. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give Brother Jesse another great round of applause, man. That's, man, that's some heavy stuff. Right? I'm sitting back there thinking, I'm, I'm listening to Stevie Wonder, uh, um, little Marvin Gaye, uh, uh, um, a little bit of James Brown there, a little Gil Scott Heron, Last Poets, Curtis Mayfield, man. Uh, huh. Don't be so mean. <laughs> Uh, that was great there, Brother Jesse. Um, our next poet, uh, this gentleman, this is his uh, first time uh, participating in our program. Let's give Erwin uh, L. McJunkins, let's give him a great round of applause. He's going to come up and do some poetry. All right. Come on, please. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate to be here this evening. I'd like to open up with uh, a poem that I did a few years back. It's called Corinthians. <clears throat> I'm a poet. I come from a distant star in another realm. I come bearing a gift given to me in another place in time. I'm a poet. Playing in the sounds, magicians swirl around. Dancing on rainbows, the sun sends down. I'm a romantic metaphor, skinny dipping in the warmth of a rhapsody, a romancer whose metaphors you've heard, who's a metaphor, excuse me, I'm a romantic metaphor skinny dipping in the warmth of a rhapsody, a romancer whose metaphors you've heard before and I come to you riding the crest of a comet hurled here from a distant star in another realm. 
I have traveled over continents of space and time, through galaxies of infinity, bearing only a gift given to me in another place, another time. I'm just a poet. I come to you like a naked angel riding the wing of a dove, a cherub embracing the innocence of childish laughter. I come heralding trumpets of joy, born of a voice from a distant thunder. For I carry cradled in the bosom of my heart a sacred gift. I'm just a poet. I come, a salt bursting on the horizon like a burning sphere cracking the dawn. I come, assaulting the future, being yet always becoming, till time will have no essence. I come to you without selfish want, but to share the greatness of this glorious gift, nestled in the cradle of my chalice, on the, on the, on the altar of my tabernacle, a gift, warm as a summer's day, as pure as the first breath of spring, more precious than fortunes of palace treasures. I come to you before the winds turn my mess, excuse me, I come to you before this marvelous jewel is It will heal the wounds of human suffering. The pains and agony of despair will no longer prevail. The desolation of life will cease, for it will bring peace and harmony to a tumultuous world. I'm only a, I'm only a poet. I come from a distant star in another realm. I come to you bearing a gift given to me in another place in time. I come to you before the winds turn my vessel to sand, before my footsteps wash away in the evening of some forsaken shore, before my journey with the inevitable midnight rider. I am merely a poet I come assaulting, I come to you, I come to you like a morning, st like a morning, like a morning song in the morning. I bring you a gift to cherish forever. I come to you like a song in the morning. Thank you. I have a song I've been wanting to sing. Its lyrics are my life. Love in its glory tells a story all ears should hear. I have a song for you, humanity, a symphony of sounds embracing nations of you. If only the, no if only the notes will come. The melody is in harmony we create. I have my style, you have yours. Let's rejoice in the beauty of difference. All flowers aren't the same. They blossom in love and wither away with time. And before they blossom in love and wither away with time. So before we leave this realm, let's share the, let's share a moment. 
The footsteps we make are the footsteps we leave behind. And since we've got to believe in something, let's believe in love. Yes, humanity, I have a song for you. Its lyrics are my life. The definitive note is you. The melody is in harmony we create. Remember, love in its glory tells a story. All ears should hear. So let's rejoice in the beauty of our difference, spangling this lifetime like stars in the night that others might sing springtimes of our song. Let's get us up another great round of applause. All right. Yeah. That's pretty smooth there, man. Uh, the love man. <laughs> All right, Dr. Love is in the house. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do one more poem and then I'm going to uh, introduce our next poets. Um, this is a title uh, poem to one of my plays that I wrote. Um, initially it was uh, the splendor of ghetto suave expressions of a sweet rapper and I just changed it to simply sweet expressions and it goes um, hey there lovely lady warm beautiful sweet tender sexy sincere and all of them kind of nice things you're even more to my heart lady love I've searched all of my life all of my life looking for your kind of loving tenderness it's beautiful and real Oh, what is all this sweet love I feel? I see it in your eyes and I feel your love looking through the windows of my world. And your smile is a warm and wonderful reflection of the love that's in your heart. And when I look into your eyes, I find myself saying, my goodness alive, your lips sure look tasty. I'll bet they are very, very sweet. Lady, how are my chances? Very good, I hope. I'd be proud to be your so love a lot, baby, anytime, all the time, day and night. Then we can share the beauty and pleasure of evening walks, hand in hand, strolling through the park, stop under a palm tree, dancing in the moonlight so we can kiss and hug and whisper sweet somethings as a warm and lovely summer breeze strums strings from a sweet... <laughs> strings from the uh, tender summer leaves, baby you and me together, sweet melody magic as our hearts dance in celebration of uh, the beautiful beginning of our love affair. Hearts touch on this lovely day, sweet love smiles. Now let us listen to the sweet beat of the falling rain, beautiful music to our ears, sweet music for our hearts as we dance to love. Um, I'll make up for that, man. Let me uh, do another one quick. Uh, because there's, I mean, that, it's inspiring to see so many young people here. Um, and uh, I want to dedicate this to our uh, young people. Uh, this is uh, one of my uh, favorites. Um, it's entitled, um, Young America, We Need the Light. People of the world, please listen to me. I am the youth of America, and as the beauty of wisdom unfolds and uses the tools of knowledge and time to begin shaping and rounding our character and personalities, let the hands of wisdom hand off the batons of knowledge as generation after generations run eternal marathons of life. Let them run into the beautiful horizon spread in the righteousness of life, the master plan, the way the great creator meant for it to be. Today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Let them be groomed and endowed with the eternal fires of wisdom and life as they become knowledgeable with the, and equipped with the tools to build, taking leadership roles today, preparing us for tomorrow's world as they positively and constructively affect the qualities of life, exerting the necessary direction, leadership, and guidance so that there may be a better world today and tomorrow for all of us to live in as their thoughts for progression pyramid to the sky, touching the sun, life source of energy, 
As hearts of desire become inspirational sensations, may the wings of life take them into picture-perfect flights as they quest for the dreams of their heart as they endeavor span the universe, taking them near and far. Have no fear, my friends, for the wings of life will take your hearts and minds on adventurous journey beyond beyond. Let us not complicate life's constructive process and become a society of hybrid thinkers trying to rule a universal airwaves of communication. True, we need the super minds, but the eternal fires of our love, desire, and inspiration in our hearts that make this world grow. Thank you. Thank you. Our next poet is going to be um, Leonville. This is going to be his first time. So let's give uh, Leonville a great round of applause there. First, uh, my poem is very short and I just happened to find it. But I'd like to set this poem up and tell you a little story. Uh, my job sometimes required me to be stationary in a spot, and I get a chance to observe the public. And the other day I was parked out here in front of the library. I work for a literacy program, Project Read. And I got a chance to kind of check people out going by, and I happened to see what I call an elderly statesman. I happened to see a giant. It was a senior, he was well-dressed, maybe 6'3", walking down the street, uh, very gray, but very distinguished looking, very dignified, and he had a smile on his face. And he made me think about the giant men that were in my family. When I was a young kid, these were great, big, giant men who took care of us, who many of us know if it weren't for them and for what they had to endure, we wouldn't be here today. And so when looking at that giant, I began to realize that we have forgotten about these giant people. These men who were six feet tall, but to us they looked like they were a hundred feet tall. These men who got up in the morning and when it was cold, it was much colder because the world that they were working in, the world that they were living in. These men that gave so much for us to be here today. So the next time you're walking down the street, realize that you may have just stepped in the footprints of a giant a giant that got us here. So it was very difficult finding a poem, so I found something I thought caught my eye because it reminded me of a good time and a time when these giants were in my life. And this is by Lucy Clifford and it's called Good Times. My daddy paid the rent, the insurance man is gone, the lights are back on. Uncle Bruce hit for a dollar straight, and they is good times, good times. My mama made bread, grandpa come over, everybody was drunk, dancing in the kitchen, singing and dancing. Oh, these are good times, good times, good times. Oh, children, think about the good times. All right. They're doing our green on us here. <laughs> All right. Um, our next poet is going to be uh, Cynthia Carter. There's Cynthia Carter in the house. Okay. Uh, yeah. um. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll do another poem and then we'll go uh, round robin. Okay. Um, this um, 
this poem here, like uh, coming up once again, uh, seeing Dr. King's picture there and what it means to have uh, peace as reflected in some of the earlier poetry tonight. Uh, this poem was inspired out of Dr. King's vision to see not only peace here in America, but peace throughout the world, and for people to open their eyes, their hearts and minds, and develop an understanding and try to get along best as possible despite the social and economic conditions that uh, um, touch us. Um, and it's entitled, and I was telling uh, Brother uh, Diallo, like I, just looking at the pictures, like, look at the pictures as I recite this poem. Out of the midnight blue, as a gentle breeze tames the turbulent winds and the pouring rain, then as the rainy clouds parted, the sunshine smiled upon all of the people of the world. Then the eyes of the sky opened and gave us a beautiful day in the sun. Then people opened their eyes with a profound respect for life. Then people opened their hearts and gave love that filled other people's hearts with appreciation for life. Then people opened their minds, the reservoirs of wisdom, and poured golden knowledge into the mainstreams of society as hearts of love and rhythm with life get ready to set sail from which the ships of friendship will sail, carrying the cargo of love, trust, unity, brotherhood, friendship, and understanding. The raging seas have mellowed down from the love-touched waves. Tranquility and sweet serenity is the music we hear. Somewhere, someone has said and done something beautiful. I've touched upon every shore as my desire to rise to the golden heights. Inspiration elevated my heart, and I soared above every mountain. I spoke of unity for all mankind, and the skies were peacefully filled. In fire, in rain, in darkness, in times of a storm, in times of uncertainty, I know that there'll be sunshine because somewhere someone has said and done something beautiful. Thank you. After uh, uh, we got Gil Scott Heron over here now, uh, 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 let, let's let's get Gil Scott Heron back up here again. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brother Jesse Wiley, uh, uh, Brother Jesse, gonna come back up and do some more poetry. Let's give him a great round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't want to get on you guys' nerves and whatnot, but um, I have a. I would do one, but I, I, I really want to share, if that's okay with you guys. Um, the first is, uh, it's called Sentiments. Um, yeah. King to your queen, a tasty, wonderful, delightful aphrodisiac of life and love with romantic interludes hidden in between, these are my sentiments exactly. These are my expressions of desire, need, and much sought after emotional bliss, kissed with intellectual, thought-provoking terminology full of spirituality. Really, these are my sentiments. Hopeful, romance-filled visions of mirth, joyful and contemplative words, wealthy with the riches of innocence. Sentiments, mine. Finely tuned instruments of virtue and imagination galore, picture perfect, classical arrangements of subjects and predicates designed to expose I to all. Yes, these sentiments are mine. They are divine and meaningful, elevated thought higher than heaven's plateaus of forever. Synonymous with beauty and strength and spiritual hearts, my sentiments are exactly like God's because I am a God within a God within God, and God is love above every other sentiment man may discover, really. My sentiments are respectful, yet sometimes impatient, impractical statements of a lover. There are no other sentiments like the many I hold. They are bold interpretations of the magic which I possess and must control. I seek to nurture self in order that I may nurture how I feel. Yet my thoughts are true, are true, are true, really. My sentiments are for real. My sentiments, exactly. And uh, finally, I want to do something by, uh, it's not mine, it's by this cat named um, Malik Youssef it's from Chicago. Um, and it's called uh, Trouble Won't Last. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
But I'm saying, here I am, say lying and praying, but I am laying something hot. Cause baby, it's cold outside, and even when it's not, it still is. Baby shorties ask me what the deal is. Now listen to they mom and them, cause they know what they talking about like real is. I say, well shorty, desire be what real is. And when I first came to her, I was still wet behind the ears, so I was just a name to her. I heard older cats lay claim to her and say they spit game to her, but they never put a name to her. So I call her desire, like so many street cars that I did for. For promises little brothers did bids for, and little sisters sacrificed they head for. Even streetwise vets wind up dead for. See, she will attempt to straight pimp you. You'll scream freak the world, but soon go limp too. She proclaimed that my steed was way off the rack. I had style, but it was the caddy I lack, with the gangster white walls and a diamond in the back. I asked her was she white or black, she said neither one or somewhere in between. Plus, she was mean and had been seen in places where cats got big faces. Has made some trade in freestyles for free bases. I knew that my best friend was meddling, but I continued peddling. But I got arrested before I got rich, trying to make some scratch like a trigger finger that itch. She told me she called me an ambulance if I ever called her a witch. I tried to be online, but the Matrix had a major glitch. She said my style could never switch. I was her nigga for life. She said I hope you probably could pronounce Malik yourself, but they could pronounce us man and wife. Told the script, I attempted to flip, flop, flip, flop, and the back was known in the back seats. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rap. <laughs> Yeah, let's give uh, Brother Jesse a great round of applause. That's a brilliant young brother there. Uh, our next poet is going to be, uh, this is her first time participating with us, so let's, let's give her a warm welcome. Uh, Bernie Sanders is going to come up and do some poetry, so let's give it up for her. I didn't really write it out. Most of my poetry is, um, is unwritten because it keeps rewriting itself. I always know the title and it just keeps rewriting itself and it changes with time. And I came to the conclusion that I know I don't write alone. Thoughts come and thoughts just go. And I don't perpetuate the thought at all. So I know I don't, I don't write along. One of my favorite um, title is um, How Deep the Silence. And I chose that for tonight because it is one of the things that really launched me out like a star from a, another place. And I feel just like that. And I believe we're all stars and we are all stars from another place. But how deep the silence. You know no noise until you have death with silence. Silence will teach you what you think you may never have heard. There is no silence in silence. Silence has all the information there is, and until it becomes your teacher, and it does select you, you do not select it. How deep the silence. Within silence will come answers to all of your questions, and questions that you have never even asked. How deep the silence. Within silence come many, many of those that have gone before us. My approach to Christ was, did you really die? Did you really leave us with all the sorrow every year to go through every year to rebirth your death? And in the silence I heard, maybe I did and maybe I didn't, but all you know is what you've been presented with, how deep the silence. And I asked God, do you have brothers and sisters? Did you ever cry? Do you ever get tired of hearing our problems? How deep the silence and the response was, I am all there is, and you are all I am, because we are many. Nothing exists until something has gone before it, and before it includes everything that is in silence. Within silence, you will hear and feel with your body and with your eyes. You need no words to hear sound, and um, Stevie Wonder can attest to that, believe me. With no words, you can hear light. With no words, you can hear color. 
You need no words to hear anything that exists. With no words, you can walk and never be hit by anything. How deep the silence, because within silence, once you have been gripped in silence, you will know there is no such thing as no noise, because in silence, the biggest noise will come, and you may never ever want to go into it again once you ever get out of it, because how deep the silence is everything you ever wanted to know. The other, one I, the other one I will do, and it is just the title because it always writes itself, and it is just called Fear Nothing. Because within fear, F-E-A-R, there is the word ear, E-A-R. And within the ear, you hear everything. There is nothing to fear. When there is fear, turn around and go right into it. And once you embrace it, you will do a dance that you have never done before. There is nothing to fear, because within fear is the ear, and with your ear you hear everything. And everything there is to hear will make who you are. So whenever you fear, turn around and face it, and merge with it, because there is nothing to fear. Let's give her another one. Okay, uh, Brother Bernard Williams, he's going to come, come up and do another poem for us. Let's give him a great round of applause. Uh, uh. Okay, I just have this little short poem. I just have this fumbling through my bag, and I have this. One little poem I've written, it's a short poem and it's called Looking for Love. I got up this morning looking for love. I looked up, I looked down, I looked all around. Moments later with no luck, I began to frown. Then I thought, what good would that do to turn the smile upside down? When you came by, I began to focus on you. The company was good, but still that didn't do. When you left, you blew like a cold wind. Then I thought to myself, just like love from the heart, love comes from within. I was waiting for Brother Williams to break off into the temptation walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little temptation walk here tonight. Uh, okay, uh, Brother Patrick Johnson gonna come and do some more poetry, so let's give it up for the Patrick, yeah. All right. Thank you again, everyone. Um, I wrote this poem while looking at, um, at, at the woman that raised me and having watched her age over the years. And I said, boy, I bet she sighed a lot when she looked back on some of her memories and some of the people and some of the good times. She was born around the turn of the century, so I can only imagine what, what, what some of the thoughts may be. I, I wrote this poem, and it's called Long. Oh, how I long for yesterday, the days of way back when. Life was carefree, fun was around to be had, most of which turned out to be sin. Oh, how I yearned for those yesteryears when I was just a kid. I could almost smell the food on the stove. Who's left? that could season or fry a chop like dear old mom did. Oh, how well I can remember going fishing with dad's old cane pole. 
walking back home, carrying my catch. Boy, that was some fishing hole. Yes, those days may long be gone, but for me, they'll always be there to sit and look back on, to look back on when I sit and stare, I sigh when I long. That's long. And I'd like to do one more. Since everyone's doing these low of poems, I guess I'll do one too. Um, it was uh, <laughs> the first poem that I did was actually a love poem. Uh, it was called Star of My Life. The heavens are filled with millions of stars. How will I know which star you are? Is my star near or is my star far? How will I know which star you are? I feel the warmth of your rays shining on my soul. Will I find you my star before I grow old? Oh, star of my life, will you twinkle and give me a clue? Or must I spend my lifetime in search of you? Although you are far, I know you are there. To see you, my star, is all that I care. To see you, my star, and to know you exist. For the first time we meet, we shall share a kiss. Oh, star of my life, will you twinkle and give me a clue? Oh, star of my life, I live just for you. Thank you, everyone. Next poet is going to be uh, Luther Vandross. No, I'm just uh, <laughs> hey, Luther in the house. Uh, <laughs> uh, our next poet is going to be uh, Shani, uh, Shani's going to come up and do some more poetry, so let's give her a great round of applause there. Come on, Shani. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm just going to read this one. This is um, this is called Conscience Calls. This is one of the first poems that I wrote. It's, and here it goes. This is your conscience calling you. I've been trying to reach you, but I haven't been able to. I don't know, but it seems like you've been avoiding me. I realize that you have an extremely busy schedule and haven't been able to get in touch with me, but I was hoping that you could take out a little time to hear what I have to say. First and utmost, you know I have always been here and will always be there for you. I can show you ways that you can instantly become at peace with yourself. You can travel to places unconceived by the naked eye, visit ancient kingdoms, sit in the lap of the comfort of your ancestors. The keys are in the pocket of your soul. Take them out and use them. You may use them to their fullest capacity. Me, being your close friend, I have always tried to help keep you out of situations doomed for disaster by penetrating the truth through your mind. I will never stand back and watch you destroy yourself. That is a promise that I shall keep to you indefinitely. 
When your thoughts are clean and clear, I feel rejuvenated and refreshed. When your thoughts are unclear and unclean, I get irritated and can get very bothersome. I get irritated and can get very bothersome. I just want you to keep in mind that I care a lot about you and I want you to be the best that you can be. What have you got to lose? It doesn't cost anything. So remember that I am always here when you need me. I'll talk to you again later. Goodbye. As you know, this my little son is kind of getting on my conscience right now. So let me go back. <laughs> okay. Um, our next quote is going to be. Uh, um, Brother uh, Erwin L. Junkin, McJunkins, he's going to come up and do a couple more poems for you. So let's give him another great round of applause there. Oh! Thank you. <laughs> Again, it's good to be back here. This is called Wheeling on the Wah Wah. When the Wawa wails West in on ritual rhythms for a soul celebration, West winds blow East, and the Duke brings his keys along with a quarter of conjure men to sit in a set. You know the Kings, Curtis and Coltrane, Satchmo Louie and Lee and Jimmy twanging on time. The dead don't die, they just rest a while and Igbo princesses dance around the blood of chickens to tams and bones, while a mojo goddess caresses the air with a poem, and we boogie bojangles on the downbeat. When the wawa wails, bluesy notes fall like dewdrops of Dinah, singing the difference of dream days. And somewhere on a ghetto hill, mangled in the middle of a city screaming, Buddy and Belinda take time from the pains of society citizenship to see how many sapphires make up a night, counting the diamonds it holds. And for a while, and for a while, whispers of honeydew are softly unspoken. After all, isn't that what this thing called life is all about? And we boogie bojangles on the downbeat. The wawa wails when babies scream from rickets and rat bites, from bullets ripping through the guts of young bloods dancing in the streets, from youngsters going into old zones when serpents shoot venom into their veins, pacifying their will to live. It wails, it wails words of hope to men and women exiled behind iron bars for preaching the gospel according to, according to liberty. It wails over the body of fallen comrades, hoping they did not die in vain. But the, but the Alpha and Omega stands as a mainstay symbol a faith for us to keep on, keeping on. And we boogie both angles on the downbeat. <clears throat> it wasn't finished. <laughs> I'm sorry. When wisdom wails on the wawa, nations of men will rise to the cry, free limo, free limo. While Chrysler cries crisis, 
through winds of Uhuru. The true poets will see their work come to bear fruit when voices sing the truth of their prophecies, and deaf ears will hear them, for people will see truth as knowledge, and freedom will blow in the winds, and it will touch the lips of all tongues, and will and will boogie bojangles on the downbeat. Yeah, when the Wawa wails wisdom, the tar baby will will no longer be a Dutch treat, and diplomatic thieves will run babbling in the streets, and Chrysler will cry, for by their sorceries all nations were deceived. But the deception of these serpents will prevail no longer. The, the evil that lurks within their souls will fall, cause wisdom will be wailing in the hearts and minds of men and women when merchants lose their greatness. For they were the power and glory. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But when wise men wail, the Wawa will be a merger of new nations, of crosses with stars and crescents, Shango, Dambala, and Buddha all united in the mansions of my father's house. Peace will be on the horizon, crescendoing love throughout the land. Then the pharaohs will abdicate their thrones and will boogie Bojangles on the downbeat. <laughs> Can I read one more? Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is called My Wish for 2000. I'm not a thug, I'm a poet. I'm a homeboy of San Francisco. I was born in Hunters Point, raised in the, in the Fillmore and Lakeview. Now I'm living in Lakeview. I was raised on fried chicken, black-eyed peas, collard greens, and cornbread. On some weekends, we'd pile into the old Buick and went to a, fright and went to a, a restaurant in Chinatown. I watched my parents go through the, the parent, I watched my parents go through the tumble dry times of a marriage. The 40s, 50s, and 60s weren't easy years for an African-American family. My daddy put in his years as a chipper at the naval shipyard. My mother worked for the shipyard and retired as a worker for the naval ship for the for the for the naval post office. Like I said, the 40s, 50s, and 60s weren't easy years for a black man and woman trying to, trying to raise a family, trying to make it in this fair city of the Golden Gate. My parents raised us, uh, my parents raised us, five kids at 1244 Oakdale, Building 22, Section E, four girls and a boy. I also have two more brothers in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I remember exclaiming with pride the joy of admiration that I had a big brother. This is when Junior came to see the family after getting out of the army. We in fact had a, a small army of our own. My mother and father loved us with a special kind of love. I remember my mother holding me in our arms as a baby. She called me Mr. As a, as a child, we worked together on community projects in the 60s. She gave me my first collection of, of Shakespeare and a, and a in a Webster's Dictionary. She wanted her son to be somebody. 
I remember in the, in the evening after work, my father would sit, my father would sit in the big chair and, and, sing, gospel hy and sing gospel hymns out the window. I'd sit between his legs and we'd watch baseball games and Jackie Gleason. One Sunday, while the girls were playing, my father sat me on a stool and, and taught me the whispers of, fry, of frying chicken. But like I said, those weren't easy years for a black man and woman. They loved each other, they loved us, but they fought. During those times, it was hard for a black man and woman to love each other. To, during that time, it was hard for a black man and woman to talk to each other. The first time I saw a grown man cry was when my, my was when my mother hit left my father. She loved him, but she couldn't stand for him to hit her. I'm telling you, I'm not a thug. I'm a poet. I've graduated from high school and graduated with a and, and graduated with a with a bachelor's degree. And yes, I've performed on the stages of this fair city as a as an actor. I've had I've had I've I've had epileptic seizures that kicked the shit out of me memory wise. But my only wish in life is to love and be loved. If there's if there's junk in that, well then too bad. I've got a song in my heart and with and rhythm in my soul. I've I've lived in apartments and third-rate hotel rooms with a writer's block and considering su uh, suicide with fear as my best buddy. I've been, the, I've been the butt of some new wave joke. But I'm telling you now, I'm not a thug. I'm a poet. Like Martin Luther King, I too have a dream. I would like to be internet smart, act, play music, and write, and, and write poetry and plays, and direct, po and, direct, and direct plays. I would like to have my master's degree and be, and be business smart in the community. No. I'm not perfect, but tell me in the, re in the realm of humanity, is there such a thing as perfection? <laughs> all right, all right, let's give it up there. Good round of applause. And once again, we'd like to thank you for coming out this evening and celebrating our 11th annual uh, Bayview Annie Wadden uh, Poetry Recital celebrating uh, National Poetry Month. And once again, it's a pleasure to be your host again. And uh, um, we'd like to thank uh, our cameraman Dave for doing a, another wonderful job. We'd like to thank uh, Linda Brooks Burden, our branch manager. She does such a wonderful job. And I would like all of the poets to come up here, and I'd like to personally thank you all. Uh, Bernard Williams, Abdul Wright Azim, uh, Shani, uh, Craig Cohen uh, Jr., Patrick Johnson, Jesse Wiley, Diallo, Leon Bill, Ernell McJunkins, Jesse Wiley. 
Again. I'm precious. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Again, thank you again. And uh, until we meet again uh, next year, thank you and good evening. All right. Thank you for all coming out. Uh, there's food and refreshments. <laughs> <laughs>